Welcome back to the Venusa Lab. My name is Marcial Sanchez Agudo, and together we will dive into large language models for physical problems. In this first video, we will focus on the attention mechanism, which is one of the main novelties proposed by this architecture. However, we will expand our knowledge on this mechanism by showing how intuition can facilitate the design of this attention, enhancing the interpretation and the analysis of physical systems. It is also important to visit past videos of the YouTube channel regarding the implementation and applications of these deep learning models for the prediction of turbulent flows, and also to visit the singular value decomposition series, as this tool it's uh, really important in linear algebra, but becomes fundamental when analyzing data in machine learning models. Large language models or transformer models are multi-layer architectures. Uh, as one can see on the left image, these architectures are conformed by many kinds of layers. They go from feedforward layers, ad norm layers, attention layers, input uh, embedding layers, um, and MLPs in the case that we want to com um, compress our information at the end of the model. And fundamentally, uh, the canonical architecture, as we saw in the left image, is the encoder block and the decoder block. The encoder is the left block and is delimited by the input by embedding, and the decoder is the, out, uh, the right block delimited by the output embedding. From a model perspective, both blocks are pretty similar. However, the data that is fed into them is completely different. So in order to understand better the intrinsics of this model, we will focus only in the encoder block. Uh, and this is shown in the second image and the third image. Both of the encoders are pretty much uh, equivalent, except from the embedding layer, where the second image uh, leverages um, um, time-to-vector embedding, while the third one uses a time-space embedding, a more novel embedding mechanism, which will be later introduced um, in incoming videos. In here, we already have a glimpse on one of the main characteristics of the transformer, and is the flexibility that it brings to the designer, and is the capability to, to play with the layers, to organize our architecture as optimally as possible, to um, extract all um, relevant information or patterns of our feature. Diving into the layers, the transformer just applies a transformation into our set. Let's think of a, of a text. Um, in Spanish, and it translates to English. But one could think of a physical problem. This could be, uh, I have a time series, and I want to predict the next step. Or it could be a position in a space, and I want to predict another position in a space. So in order to understand better uh, this model, we will follow a sequential order. However, it's important to remark that the only order that needs to be imposed are the first two steps. The embedding and the positional encoding needs to be at the beginning of our architecture. Are These two layers are the main uh, mechanisms in to one, extract a uh, levelization of our data and to position of our data. So the embedding, it's just a, a transformation from the language space, thinking that our data is just a sentence, a Spanish sentence, from the language space to the mathematical space. So let's say that we want to translate a sentence in Spanish to English. Each of the words of the sentence in Spanish could have a label, a label in, in, in the dictionary, meaning if a dictionary has n words, each of these sentences will have a number from 1 to n. However, this la labelization is still not allowing us to use any of the mathematical tools that we need to um, categorize similarities or differences between words. So what we do is we project this set into a Euclidean space that may have as many dimensions as we want, and we define as the model. And in here, in order to understand um, easier, we are going to project this X matrix, this, this set of vectors, into an L2 space, where each of the words of the sentence will be represented by a vector of two elements. So once we do this projection, we can leverage the inner product as our metric to calculate distances between words, uh, retrieving similarities or differences. The second extracting of information that is fundamental and that one needs to um, assume and it needs to order in this way on the architecture is the positional encoding, which uh, basically includes a positional matrix. Um, and this is one of the main characteristics, uh, once again, of the transformer, because the, the possibility for translating sentences incorrect, it's really high. Meaning, um, if we have the sentence in Spanish, uh, amo el mar Mediterráneo, uh, the translation that we expect for is I love the Mediterranean Sea. However, if the model was not able to retrieve uh, positional information on how the neighboring of these words affect to the final output of the, the sentence, uh, the possibility for a bad translation such as the master of the sea, el me the Mediterranean, uh, arises. 
So what we what we do is we include the positional matrix, which is just a matrix uh, defined on sine and cosine waves. If one thinks of the P, J, 2I element of the matrix, um, the J element in this case, it's the row. Each of the words have a, a row on this positional matrix, and these rows are unique for each of the words. So what we enhance with this is the uniqueness that was imposed after the embedding, meaning that every word uh, on the sentence had a unique value on the dictionary, and now every word on our sentence has a unique position in the positional matrix. Adding up those two matrices, we create the matrix X hat, which is later uh, introduced into the attention mechanism. The attention mechanism is just a basis transformation. So if we take a step back and we stop thinking about language, it's easier to understand this attention mechanism. This X matrix was defined before as a matrix where we were stacking along the rows time and along the columns we were stacking space or features. So if we impose this matrix or this kind of dependencies in our X hat matrix, the alpha matrix is multiplying or is learning the temporal correlations while the WV it's learning the feature correlations. So it's just a temporal and a spatial transformation. Continuing with our layers, the add norm and the fit forward um, layers are the final layers that we leverage on this architecture. The add norm is a residual connection which is fundamental to once again retrieve all of information that have been lost through the attention and even more after the fit forward. So this um, add norm residual connection layer adds up the information that was inputted into the attention mechanism, all of that data that was input in the attention, adds it up to the output of the attention for a later normalization of this data. It also allows for learning parameters such as beta, lambda and epsilon, uh, facilitating the learning through the training stage. Lastly, the fit forward, it's a canonical uh, layer used in many kinds of deep learning algorithms and it's formed by two matrix multiplications with an activation function uh, in between these multiplications. So first we will multiply our input by W1 uh, matrix and we add it up to a, a vector, a bias vector. And later we activate this, this uh, matrix through a tan H, a sigmoid, a relu, any kind of non-linear function that it's able to uh, reproduce nonlinear behaviors of our data. And lastly, we multiply but also a learnable matrix W2 and we add it up to the bias vector B2. In here, we see a bit of a, a glimpse on the cross attention. For now, we will not uh, dive into it, but the cross attention is a fundamental mechanism if one wants to build a, a whole transformer with encoder and decoder, as the cross attention will uh, connect and will relate the, the prediction of the encoder with the expectation of the, of the decoder, meaning the, the decoder has information of the output and the encoder learns how this input should be translated and then through similarities of what is expected at what has been predicted, it uh, scores these predictions and it keeps learning in order to optimize this cross-attention uh, mechanism. Uh, diving into the self-attention, and before we close this video, the self-attention is just a non-bijective map uh, between input and output, meaning that uh, the attention scores are non-unique and are neither subjective or bijective. There's no physical constraints on this uh, mechanism, meaning that the only uh, bias that the, the designer imposed was the inner product, and we will see that this carries a lot of limitations when try, uh, trying to study physical problems. Diving into the mechanism itself, we need to define three objects. These three objects were queries, keys, and values. These first three objects were introduced by the original paper, Attention is all you need, by Google. And once we have expressed these, these three objects, these objects have information of the input, and it has a matrix multiplication of a learnable matrix, WQ, WK, and WV, depending on, on the, the query, the key, or the value. Once we have defined the, the latter, we introduce them into the attention through an inner product, and later we calculate the softmax. The softmax is a, is a well-known known, uh, nonlinear function that it's a probabilistic function that categorizes the probability of an state or an event to occur. Um, if we um, transform the inner product to a trace, as the, both of them are equivalent, one can take advantage of the cyclic property of the trace, and we end up with the following expression that we have uh, in here, is WQ multiplied by WK. If WQ and WK, uh, after training, converge into the identity matrix, the alpha matrix is no more than the covariance matrix, meaning that the baseline for the self-attention is assuming that the best temporal 
uh, transformation, the alpha matrix, is the covariance matrix. In the case that this WQ and WK do not converge to the identity after tracing, one can refer to the alpha matrix as just the transform covariance matrix. In here, um, in the last image that we saw here, we have a glimpse on the multi-head capabilities of this attention mechanism. And it's after the multiplication with the WV matrix, with the value matrix, we split this value matrix in, in as many heads, as many subdomains as we imposed um, before the training, and we will multiply it by individual alpha matrices for these heads. These alpha matrices are, are unique for each of the heads. However, uh, we will see that the self-attention, it, it uh, lowers the, the number of parameters that need to be learned due to the fact that it's always input uh, dependent. Diving and to conclude this video, we will introduce, as we mentioned, the easy attention. This easy attention, it's a reinterpretation re of the self-attention for uh, physical systems, specifically for chaotic systems, which we will uh, introduce in, uh, in coming videos. And the main differences between these uh, two attention mechanisms are the following. Uh, the self-attention has two activation functions, which are the softmax and the relu, while the is attention only has the relu, and this uh, occurs because the attention matrix uh, is free. We gave completely freedom to the model to learn the attention matrix, meaning that we don't impose any bias uh, mean, uh, through metrics as the inner products, and we do not impose the softmax. So what we learned is we allow the machine to learn the best temporal transformation um, hoping for extracting non-linear uh, patterns on this alpha matrix instead of uh, constraining the learning to linear dependencies through the inner product. So this allows, as the alpha matrix is able to retrieve more temporal correlations, this allows for a small time delay uh, as, the, uh, as the input of our transformer, while the self-attention link uh, needs really long temporal information. And also it allows us to have a model which is uh, input independent, which one when thinks of physical problems, most of uh, modern, modern physics have been based on operator theory, such as the Schrodinger equation, a Kuhnman theory, uh, all of these um, fields of, of physics are, are normally based on an operator that evolves our, our input uh, regardless of, the, of itself, let's say. So this is an input independent operator. So the ease attention will resume to be alpha multiplied by x multiplied by wv, while the self-attention, it still uh, holds dependencies on the input through the alpha uh, score functions, and also has another matrix multiplication through the, through the temporal domain, meaning through the left, as we express of w, because the temporal dependencies that were retrieved by the alpha were not still enough to, to, to improve our performance, so the self-attention uh, needs that, that matrix multiplication to facilitate the learning on the, on the training stage. Uh, a final explanation of the multi-heads to facilitate the understanding and the scaling of this attention mechanism for multi-head uh, strategies. Uh, the one-head strategy is the left image. As one can see, one multiplies WV uh, with the X matrix, and this gives rise to the value matrix. And this value matrix is later multiplied, as we refer here, through the MATMUL operation, which is just a matrix operation with the alphas. As we can see here in the left block of the left image, uh, we propose the possibility of dense and sparse alpha matrices, as maybe the correlations uh, through a space of, the, of our input may not be dense in a way that may be sparsified, as one knows uh, the time scales of a, of a Lagrangian particle of a fluid uh, are not um, constant, they are not infinite, they are a few timescales. So taking this into account, it seems reasonable that uh, an sparse uh, matrix may give rise to, to, to a, a correct prediction or a, could, a correct transformation of our data. Uh, extending this, um, this image to multi-head, we will have the right, the right figure. The right figure is just stacking different blocks for the heads. So we will have different attention matrices for each of the heads. In the case of the self-attention, the only thing that will change along these attention matrices are the, the, the learnable matrices of the queries, keys, and the values. However, on the easy attention, all of these alpha matrices are completely new. So they have an increase on the learnable parameters that our model has, but at the same time, due to the reduction of the time delay, uh, we compensate that differentiation of parameters or even outperform the self-attention with less parameters. I hope uh, you enjoyed this, this video, this, this first video of the series of the Transformers. In the incoming uh, videos, we will focus more on the ease attention and what are the intrinsics and, and principles of this mechanism and how they can facilitate the, the learning and the, 
the understanding of chaotic systems fundamentally. So please stay tuned and, and please ask any questions you have on the YouTube comments and on the issues of the GitHub repository. All of these uh, codes are, are public and this attention mechanism has been published, there is attention, uh, also with the time space embedding. So stay tuned and see you soon.